This is a big reason why your email subscribers are not buying from you. At the end of the day, the email content is all over the place. The offer is not relevant to the freebies that are being generated um, and given away for free. And the additional content that you're putting out on social media is not connecting all of these things together. When you set SMART goals, you intentionally take the time to plan out how each piece of your content works together. When you are not setting SMART goals, those connections are not being made. Your subscribers cannot connect with you and because they do not connect with you, they do not connect with your content, they are not buying from you. That is period, point blank, okay? So, hey, welcome to back to my channel. My name is Tyler Chanel, aka The Marketing Bully. And today I'm gonna be talking to you about um, why your email subs are not buying and how smart goals can actually help you change this. All right, so this is actually the first week of our 90 Day Bully Breakdown. And it's the first YouTube video that I'm actually gonna be dropping about this. So make sure that you look through the rest of the playlist. Um, this breakdown is running from May 2024 through July 2024. We're breaking down email marketing for beginners. So there are a lot of reasons why your email subs may not be buying. But the most common reason that I come across when I'm talking to creatives and small business owners is that they lack strategy and they lack SMART goals. This is important because without goals and strategy put into place you're kind of just throwing things at the wall and trying to figure it out as you go and this isn't really the best way to do it if your overall goal that you want to accomplish is to make money from your email list you need to be intentional about what you're sending and why you're sending it. I'll give you two different examples actually of where using smart goals to actually be helpful with your email campaigns. And then we'll dive a little bit more into how to actually set smart goals for your campaigns. Now, for example, number one, let's say that you are a service provider and you share a freebie teaching beginners how to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is that you want to teach them, whether it's you want to teach them how to do RDLs, if you specialize in fitness, you want to teach them how to dress themselves, if you're a personal stylist, whatever it is you want to teach beginners how to do something. Um, now, your, your freebies are attracting beginners, right? These are people who have never done this before. They have never committed to this before. Um, you did not specify what kind of beginner. You didn't specify how much money you wanted them to make. Um, if they're in the mindset to invest and get started today. And so now that they have the freebie, you're sending them follow-up emails, right? In the follow-up emails that you're sending them, um, you mentioned the freebie here and there, but your main goal is to sell. As a service provider, you probably have offers that range anywhere from $500 to $5,000, right? Um, but the problem is that you never determined if these were qualified leads who could buy your offer. Um, another problem is that when you made the freebie, you were not targeting a specific group of people. You were just targeting beginners who had never done what you're trying to teach them how to do. So now that you're trying to send them content about an offer, they are not necessarily warmed up to this offer. They may not necessarily be interested and they also may not have the disposable income as a beginner. What you should have done instead was set goals to create a campaign to attract your ideal customer, not just beginners. Now, if your ideal customer is a beginner who's been in the research stage for six months and they need a little push, um, they also have, you know, X amount of money, whether it is 2,000, 10,000, 20, 30,000, however much money set aside to invest in something similar or very specific to what you were trying to teach them. Now you know what kind of freebie you need to make because you understand what touch point, uh, what pain points you need to be touching on. Without setting the proper goals though, you would never fully understand that. And so when you're designing freebies and email campaigns and putting offers together for them, there's a disconnect there because they were never connected to begin with because these were never qualified leads for you. Just creating a freebie and just telling people to subscribe to your newsletter is not how you generate qualified leads for a newsletter, okay? You gotta start with setting your goals, setting your intentions so that you understand what type of content needs to be produced as a result. Now, for a second example with um, e-commerce brands, let's say you just dropped a new product, right? You're like, everybody on my email list needs to know right away. And they all get the exact same 
offer, right? Let's say uh, you offer them free shipping or you offer everybody 10% off. The problem with this is that you never took the time to be like, you know, okay, this product is relevant to five other products that are already in my store. Um, I want the people who bought those five other products that would pair well with this one um, to get a special offer and to be the first ones to know that this product dropped. Now, for everyone else, because they're unfamiliar with this type of product, um, I need to run an educational campaign to help them better connect with the product and see its value. Now you understand that you have two sets of goals. You have a set of goals for people who are likely to already buy because they already have things that work well with this new product. And you have a set of people who have never bought anything in the realm of working with this product, nor have they had any abandoned carts or any web browser abandonment activity, right? And so these are going to be two different sets of campaigns, but you are only able to identify that by setting SMART goals. Um, when you start with the S, which is specific, specific means that is this a vague goal or is this goal detailed enough to where anyone in my organization can look at this goal and fully understand what the goal is and how it will actually be determined if we were successful in attaining this goal, right? Okay, so for example, an example of a vague goal would be I want to grow my email list. An example of a specific goal would be, I want to grow my email list by 300 subscribers within 60 days, and I plan to do it by doing blank. That's a very specific goal, and those are two different things, right? My marketing assistant could look at that second goal and be like, oh, Ty wants to grow the email list by 300 subscribers within 60 days by giving out free content that focuses on blank topic. Now that I understand what this goal is, I can help her start making the free content. We can start uploading this content to a project tracker and we can keep tweaking it until we get pieces of content that generate dozens of email subscribers at a time. But with that first goal of, I just wanna grow my email list, a marketing assistant or anyone in your company in general will not be able to help you attain a goal because they do not understand what the goal is. Secondly, attainable, right? Attainable is the second one. This means, is this goal realistic with the resources that you have? Um, how, how do you know this, right? So for me personally, if I wanted to grow my email list by an additional 300 subscribers by 60 days, with the strategy that I have in mind and the audience that I have available to me, is this goal attainable? Yes, I have almost 40,000 followers across all platforms, um, including socials and my email list. And so with that in mind, um, is it possible for me to run campaigns to ask for referrals, to do new freebie generators and lead generators and so on to actually grow this email list? Yes, and how do I know? And then I share the research and my research would be that I've done it before with other campaigns. Uh -huh. Measurable means what data do we use to determine if, if this campaign was successful? Um, the first piece of data that we can use is t understanding where is the email list at right now in terms of numbers? Where would it be at if we actually gained the full 300 subscribers? Um, and secondly, did we do it by the set deadline? Um, the next uh, part of setting SMART goals is being realistic. Can we realistically achieve this specific goal with the resources that we have available by the timeline that has been set? All right, because if it's not realistic, then the goal will not be accomplished. And if the goal cannot realistically be accomplished, it is not truly a SMART goal. Um, it's more of a long-term goal, and it may be something that you may be able to accomplish long-term if you don't have the resources to do it right now. But if you do have the resources and you believe that you can meet the deadline, then it is a realistic goal. Timely just means, did we set a deadline? Is this deadline relevant? And does this deadline make sense according to our goals? Now, when you take all these things and put them together, you get a set of SMART goals that looks like this. If you want access to this, then go ahead and check the description box for my SMART goals 
freebie. I included additional YouTube tutorials that teach you how to work through um, with setting smart goals. And I also included tutorials on how to actually start creating a content strategy to help you crush your smart goals for your email campaigns. Now I know that you may think, oh, setting, setting these smart goals and taking the time to do this stuff is redundant, but I promise it is not redundant. It is very helpful. And after you run your campaigns, if you have something to go back and self-reflect on, then it will be a lot easier to actually improve your campaigns, to start generating sales, to understand how to get qualified leads, and how to curate email content that's interesting and exciting and that people genuinely want to sign up for, all right? Now, this is going to conclude um, everything that I have to say about setting smart goals to email campaigns. This is a big reason why your email subscribers are not buying from you. At the end of the day, the email content is all over the place. The offer is not relevant to the freebies that are being generated um, and given away for free. And the additional content that you're putting out on social media is not connecting all of these things together. When you set smart goals, Goals, you intentionally take the time to plan out how each piece of your content works together. When you are not setting SMART goals, those connections are not being made, your subscribers cannot connect with you, and because they do not connect with you, they do not connect with your content, they are not buying from you. That is period, point blank, okay? So let's start setting SMART goals. Go and download the SMART goals freebie worksheet that I made for you. Go and read the blog post that I wrote for you and get ready for week two where we're going to dive into how to actually make an email marketing strategy. All right, I'll see you on the timeline. If you need anything, make sure you drop a comment down below and also make sure that you tweet about me if you enjoyed this video. As always, business bestie, I wanna see you succeed and that's why I'm doing this 90 day bully breakdown.